precious Father, truly we want to just thank you for this day. Most of all, we want to thank you for another Mother's Day, a Mother's Day that we have never seen and we will never experience it again. We just thank God for each one of your mothers that are here on this, on this day, hoping that you will have a blessed and wonderful day. These and all of the blessings I'm asking in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and have a scripture reading. Next by Mother Charlotte Mayfield. on its own way. It is not intimate or resentful, irritable, or it does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Amen. Mother Charlotte for that scripture reading. All right, so affirmation of faith will be read by Sister Desiree Lawrence. Church mother, 
everyone that makes up this congregation on this day. I uh, just want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And then I'm a fine mother, Mother Broyles, who's uh, been there for me from day one, has always been there for me up to this present day. And I'm just thank God for my mom and God for all that she does. Not just for me, but for the family, for the friends. It's just, it's just being a good natural mother, a good spiritual mother. She is just uh, a jewel of my hope. If I call her, that's my ball. And uh, we speak almost every day, at a certain time, every day, twice a day, at least. And I always tell them never, if the one who never reads, I don't get a chance to call her through those time frames. Please call. I thought she would be calling you. She'd be calling everybody else. Who wanted what someone who wanted why and why not call me? So I thank God for her. Uh, my wife, Sister Debbie, who's the mother of DJ, George, and Kimberly. And just thank God for them. And just thank God for my, my daughter, Sister Shalonda. Just thank God for her being the mother of my grandchildren. Thank God for Sister Desiree, who's also the uh, mother of my little grandson, uh, Zion, and just thank God for everyone. Thank God for Sister Emily, who's, who's the godmother of those two little rascals. And I just want to thank God for my sister, who's not here yet on the day. Um, she's always had questions with my mom a lot of times over the years. And she tried to whoop me like she was my mom over the years. And just thank God for my sister, my nieces, and thank God for my mother in law, Mother Charlotte. And thank God for being the mother of my wife, Debbie. And uh, yeah, thank God for Sister Debbie. She's, uh, I brought from a lot, my long ways. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> just thank God for Sister Debbie. Just for 40, over 40, over 44 years, I believe 44 years, that we've been together. I thank God for being with Sister Debbie. So again, happy Mother's Day, Debbie. Amen. 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 All right, will there be any other testimonies today? Others that I've 
known over the years and just kind of have that influence. But as far as my mother's concerned, I, I'm thankful for what all she's done for us. Um, and I believe anytime you speak on Mother's Day, it's not taking anything away from fathers. But um, this is Mother's Day. And I know there are things that happen as you grow up. Uh, parents insulate you from things. And it's not until you become an adult when you realize what it's like being an adult. But before you get to that point, you know, your mom, moms share things with you, you just observe how they, how they do things like vacuuming. I watch my mom vacuum to this day, I like to vacuum. Uh, and there's one thing I'll do in the house, I'll do a lot of things, but I'll vacuum. Uh, and, she, and she taught us the importance of, uh, of being responsible. And, you know, my father worked retail. A lot of times it was my siblings and I with my mom on the weekends. And that was kind of a, it was rough sometimes. Um, I think it was rough, but we, we got through it. Um, and so I, I want to thank you for everything that, you, that you've done. And uh, Shalanda, uh, the, the, the Paris, as I say, is his mother and my wife. Uh, I want to thank you for, for everything that you've done as well and being uh, uh, a good wife and mother and very protective. And uh, she doesn't pull any punches. You know, she, uh, my, and that's one thing I'll say, my mother, and Shalanda both, they were never the type to condone. Just because you're your, they're your child, or you're, they're not gonna condone them wrong. They'll tell on you in front of everybody else. And I always go back to that, we didn't do it, it wasn't something we did wrong. I always go back when we went to SeaWorld <laughs> so many years ago. And I'm gonna tell this real quick. So I was there. In Florida, they had these places where you can buy tickets that people buy multi-day passes and they don't use all the days. And so they'd go back and it's okay, I didn't use all these. I'll sell them back and they'll get a portion of their money back. Well, then they in turn sell those to other people that come in that want to use you know, whatever days are left. So there's a bunch of these places in Florida. So we went to one, got some tickets to SeaWorld, went to SeaWorld. We were in line with one older gentleman. There's a younger woman over here we went, the guy looked at us, we looked at him, and then he let us go in. Well, the lady asked my parents where they got the ticket from. We had no idea, apparently, you're not supposed to buy these tickets aftermarket or on the gray market. So my mom turned around and asked my dad, where are Dwayne, where'd you get him, Dwayne? <laughs> and so we're sitting there looking, and I didn't want to get caught, so we and Shalana and Emily and Jordan kept going. <laughs> And so they took them in there and ended up buying tickets and we went and took the tickets back and got our, our money back. But, you know, we didn't do anything wrong, but my mom is, she, she has your back, but I don't know if she necessarily ride or die in that fashion. <laughs> so you know, I appreciate her. I get back to Shalana, though, not to the story that came back, but Shalana's the same way. Um, she won't condone, she'll jump on our kids first, not necessarily unjustly, but just She's not gonna assume her kids are not at fault just because they're her kids. If anybody's going to make sure to get to the bottom of it, she's gonna get to the bottom, she's gonna ask them first. And that's what parents should do. Because no one's kids are perfect, no one's kids are, are always wrong. But so many times you see parents, especially nowadays, that assume it's always someone else. We always wanna make sure, did you do something? Did you say something? And Shalana usually wanna do that. And I try to do what I can. And <laughs> but, to protect them, to protect them. But anyway, but I want to say I thank you, and I, and I think she also probably had the best omelet she probably ever had in her life this morning mm. that I cooked her. Oh. So. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, no. Will there be any other testimonies? Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on now to our praise and worship team. So, yeah. praise and worship.
afternoon. Mm. Good afternoon. Um, first, before I do the uh, announcements, uh, I just want to welcome each and every one of you here this afternoon for Mother's Day service. Yeah, amen. Thank God for each and every one of you being here and being a part of our service. I just thank God for each and every one of you. Let's give ourselves a hand. We don't have very many announcements, but we'll move on with that. First, we have the Adjutant Symposium 2023, Davenport, Iowa. Location is Mount Olive, Church of God in Christ. Date and time, Saturday, May 7th, uh, 27th at 10 a.m. We will, be, we will have guest leaders in this session. Also, I will be staying over for morning worship on that Sunday, uh, May 28th, 2023. We will begin promptly. I am uh, going to have a few certified adjutants facilitate some segments. We will also have some candidates attending the sessions for their certification. I request each of you to come with answers and share in our worship experience. Secretary of the Iowa Jurisdiction Pastor, Dr. M. Anthony Bell. Amen. Oh, and then there's also a kickoff for Mount Olive uh, Church of God in Christ Building Fund for the new edition, fourth Sunday, uh, May 28th, 2023. And then we also have our 2023 Iowa Jurisdictional AIM Convention. Um, that includes Sunday School Evangelism, Youth Music Missions. Okay. It'll be June 14th through the 15th, Wednesday through Thursday at 7.30 p.m. It'll be Superintendent Edgar O. Madison, who will be uh, our guest and then on June 16th, Friday at 7.30 p.m. will be Bishop Don W. Shelby, Jr. And then on June 17th, Saturday at 5 o'clock p.m. will be Bishop Linwood Dillard, International AIM Chairman. <coughs> and this will be held at the Word of Faith Church of God in Christ at 2325 16th Avenue Southwest. And that's Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And this will be posted on the Golden Board. We'll also continue to announce it as time moves on. That's all I have this afternoon. Give you back in the hands of the giver. Amen. Amen. All right, so now we're going to move on to um, reading by Sister Shalana Royals. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Mother's Day to everyone, all the mothers, mother figures, mother Jesus. You identify as a mother. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Um, this is a poem that Mother Hester normally reads, but since she's not here today, I'm stepping in for her. It's called A Mother's Love. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion, of sacrifice, and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring come what may. For, north, for nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaken. And it never fails or falters even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when the world around condemns and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gems. It is far beyond defining. It defies all explanation. And it still remains a secret like the mysteries of creation. A many splendored miracle man cannot understand, and another wondrous evidence of God's tender garden hand. And that was by Helen Steiner Bryce. Amen. Okay, so we're going to move our now introduction of speaker. Um, we will have our speaker come up, but before that, um, you will hear the Mount Olive Angelic Choir. So if we can go ahead and have Mother Constance Royals introduce our speaker. Introduce our 
our speaker, thank you for today. And I don't think you know, she'll be a surprise or, or to any of you. I think everyone here are, are for, quite familiar with, with our speaker. And that will be none other than Sister Friend, Sister uh, Sandra F. Griffith. So we just are expecting wonderful words coming from Mother Griffith on this afternoon. So sit, please sit back, listen attentively, and I'm sure you go home with something that you probably did not know and had not heard before. Mother Griffith is a great teacher, and I'm glad to be able to call her my sister friend. Thank you.
those that are here in your sanctuary on today, Lord. God, I ask that you give me what to say and how to say it, and that it will be received as you gave it to me, Lord. And we'll be so careful to give your name all the praise, honor, and glory. In the name, name of your dear son, Jesus, we say amen and amen. amen. Day to all of the mothers. So glad to see you out. You know what? It's a wonderful thing to be a mother and to have children. And it's so funny because when Sister Bros had called me last Saturday, Mother Bros had called me and asked me to speak on the day. I tried to make excuses and all. She says, Oh, you can do it. I said, I'm not able to stand for long periods of time. This and but I finally told her yes. And as I began to think about, well, Lord, what can I say on Mother's Day, I thought. Should I talk about Eve, who was the first mother listed in the Bible? Should I talk about Sarah, who was so old when she had a child? Should I talk about Hannah, who fervently prayed for God to give her a child? And she promised if he gave her a son, she'd give him back to him. Amen. Should I talk about Elizabeth, who was also old and barren? But her and her husband ended up having a child. And then I thought, oh my God, what about Mary, the yeah. mother of Jesus? That's the greatest mother of all. She brought our Lord and Savior into the world. And you know what? I'm not going to talk about any of those mothers. <laughs> <laughs> of scripture that I'm going to share with you. And you think, well, why in the world would you take such a short verse to bring a message from? But the first thing I want to share, and this is the New King James Version, but it's from 2 Timothy. And it's Paul writing to Timothy, of course. And he says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desire to see you, being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the land on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, so with that thought in mind, I thought of the little subject. Is your faith evident? Paul is able to know that Timothy has faith because he witnessed it in his grandmother Lois and in his mother Eunice. Mothers, grandmothers, mother figures, aunts, godmothers, who are, you don't know how much influence you have on those under you. As we've even listened to the testimonies today, Deacon DJ sharing about things and his wife, his mother, his wife. Do you know your faith should play a part in everything you do? Remember Mother Julia used to sing the song, what you do now, do it with a heavenly mind. Do you know we should live our lives with heaven in view? And if we really live every day that way, we can influence and have an impact on other people's lives. Is your faith evident in you? And you know the thing is, Timothy's father was a Greek. But his grandmother and his mother had something that Paul was able to see in him. And then another verse of scripture that came to me I wanted to read and you sure think, well my goodness, what does that have to do with anything? And this is from Isaiah 
the 49th chapter. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted, his afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. But look at what is asked. Can a mother forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Can you imagine our heavenly Father? He had sent his people into captivity because of their sin. And he's telling them to rejoice and all. And they said, God has forsaken us. He has forgotten us. But he's letting them know, even though a mother can forget the child she's nursing, the son of her womb, he'll never forget us. Aren't you glad we have a heavenly father who will never forget us? He has inscribed us on the palm of his hand. And you know, there is nothing like a godly mother. Nothing like a godly mother. And so with that, I want to share this. God compared his love for his people with a mother's love for her child. When the people of Israel felt abandoned by God during their exile, they complained, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. But God said, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. When we are distressed or disillusioned, we may feel abandoned by society, family, and friends, but God does not abandon us. It is a great encouragement that the Lord says, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand to indicate how much he knows and protects us. Even if people forsake us, God will never forsake his own. God never forgets you. And on this Mother's Day, I will ever want to be encouraged to know that God will never forget you. Yeah. Once you're his, what does he say? All that the Father has given me, I have kept. And no one can pluck them out of my hand. God remembers each and every one of us, the mothers, the fathers, because there could be no mothers without fathers, just like there could be no fathers without mother. So God never forgets his own. And to me, that's so encouraging. God never forgets his own. And you know what? The unconditional love of a virtuous mother is priceless. There's nothing like the unconditional love of a virtuous mother. And we know the greatest love of all is God's love for us. But next to God's love is a mother's love. You know, fathers sometimes are busy working, trying to provide. But that mother, even if she works outside the home, that mother is caring, concerned about her children and doing all that she can for them. But what I want to share with everybody, be teachable. Mother, grandma, whoever you are, be teachable because you're not always right. Mm -hmm. So if you say or do the wrong thing to your children, even apologize to be teachable, have an open mind that you can learn things. And remember this, as long as you are breathing, it's a reason for you to be thankful for, to God. Amen. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, if you're breathing, you've got something to be yes. thankful for God, Amen. to God for. In fact, what does the scripture tell us in Acts? It is in him that we live and we move and we have our being. And then when we sing the song, we add to, might as well not move at all unless you move in here. 
again. So that's kind of what I wanted to share. But then this week after I had said I would be in my devotional, three days, something has come out of this little book that I want to share. And I think it's just a wonderful reminder to us all. So I'm not going to be before you long. But the first one I want to read, it was back on May 11th. He is faithful. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he is not able to deny himself. And that's from 2 Timothy 2.13. There's a man with autism who's been a clerk at a government installation for more than 30 years. Both administrators and co-workers have only praise for him because he's completely dependent. Having missed work for only a few times and then only due to serious illness, he faithfully fulfills every responsibility, never shirking his duties, wasting time or doing his work with anything less than excellence. He is truly a faithful worker. God is our perfect example of faithfulness. Even when we shirk our duties, waste time, or do our work with less than excellence, he remains faithful. He never breaks a promise. He never changes. He is not fickle or capricious. God is never lazy, never wastes time, and never does his work with less than perfection. His word is absolute truth, and we can completely depend on it. Why is God so faithful to us? Because he said he would be. And do you know that's something? When we say we will do something, we need to keep our word. We have the perfect example in our Heavenly Father. He is always faithful in doing his word. And then there's another one I'd like to read. Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. And that's from Proverbs 30 and 4. Ocean tides are fascinating. In Canada's Bay of Fundy, the difference between the high and low tides can be as high as a whopping 56 feet. Many factors account for ocean tides, gravity, the sun, the earth's rotation, and the moon. But the ultimate reason for the tides is that God decided they should be so. And nature submits to the laws established by God. Coastlines all over the world have been questioned twice each day since creation, without fail, simply because God is in authority. Do you desire to demonstrate your love for God? Then submit every single part of who you are to his authority, just as the ocean does. Obedience is often uncomfortable and inconvenient, but it's a vital way to actively show your love. Say yes when God prompts you to do something. Hold nothing back. Be as steady and compliant as the time. And you know, even in Sunday school this morning, Pastor Boone was sharing how important it is to be willing and obedient. Some people are willing to do something, will say they're gonna do it, but then they're not carrying it out. And some people will say they're not going to do it, but they'll turn around and do it. But we need to be willing and obedient. So when God prompts your spirit to do something, be willing and obedient to do it. And the last one I want to read is when you don't understand, and this is really from what I read out of Isaiah. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? 
I will not forget you, and that is Isaiah 49 and 15. But listen to this, because this is so important to us as parents. A newborn doesn't question her mother's embrace. She simply receives it. A toddler has no idea why daddy straps him into a car seat or takes his hand as they cross the street. We can't wrap our minds around the ways of God any more than a little child can comprehend the love of his mother and father. But just like a child, for us understanding love is not a prerequisite to receive it. And like a child who thrives under the care of his parents, we can flourish and grow even when God's ways are mysterious. We don't always understand God, but we can flourish and grow even when his ways are mysterious. The Holy Spirit teaches us and reveals truths about God. But there are certain times when circumstances don't make sense and we just have to trust him. Sometimes we have to be okay with the fact that understanding will come later. In the meantime, we can rest in his ability and love and thrive under his care. And that's the same with young children. They don't understand why mothers do certain things for them. They just have to believe and just trust them. They don't have this to reason with, well, why would they do this? But do you know everything that a mother does is out of love for her child? When you correct them, it's out of love for them. Whatever you do is out of love. When you cook their favorite meal, it's out of love for them. When you make sacrifices in your time to let them be involved in extracurricular activities is out of love for your child. Sometimes when a mother works, she doesn't want to do anything but lay down and put her feet up and wish somebody would cook her dinner. But you know, a mother will get up and do for her child even when she doesn't. When they're sick at night and you're so tired and sleep, you will get up to take care of that child no matter what. And we have a father that we can look to because he does all of those things for us. So the last thing I'm going to do is share with you the words of a song. And I love this song, so I printed it out so I get the lyrics right. And it's a song that C.C. Uh, Wyman sings. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head down. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you've been so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you've been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendering now. I give you everything because your goodness is running after me. Do you know the goodness of God is running after us? wanting to overtake you, us with his goodness because he wants us to be good to others. Like he's been faithful and good to us, he wants us to be faithful and good to others. So I thank you for your time and your attention, but that's all I've got for you today. But remember, God is faithful and he wants you to be the same.
So next we're going to um, do the altar call. Pastor. Amen. We truly thank God for Mother's Day. Thank God for all the mothers in the world. Amen. Even as we're having our altar call, I know man has set aside this day for Mother's Day. But every time we come to the house of the Lord, there may be someone that don't know Christ in the pardon of their sins. And today, you can know for sure that Christ died for you. If you are sinner, we're going to ask you to repeat after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus died and shed his blood for the forgiveness of my sin. I believe that Jesus rose the third day with all power in his hand. If you have said that today, now we just ask you that you will confess with your mouth that you saved. Mother Griffin was just telling us how good God is to us. So this morning, you can declare that you are a child of the living God. God, we thank you. We thank you for saving someone this morning. We thank you for the mothers, dear God. We thank you for you being our Lord and Savior. In your son Jesus' name, we say thank you. Amen. Amen. Man, we thank you. You may be seated. I thank God for all of the mothers. Thank God for each and every one that's here this morning. For the church mothers, amen. The church, amen. They have something for you. Amen. I believe you. And also, Evangelist Boone, amen. She has something for you. And then she also has a gift for some to encourage, amen. And I ask that you pray for Evangelist Boone. Amen. She traveled this week to see her mother. Many of you may not know, amen, her brothers just had a birthday on the 5th, but because we had visitors coming down, amen, she decided to be, as they say, a virtuous woman, a good wife, amen. She hung around, amen, and this weekend she went down, amen, to be with her mother. Her mother just turned 85 or 86. So she went to be with her for this Mother's Day. And I thank God for blessing her with safe travel to be with her mother, amen. So just be praying for her, that she will have a safe trip. She believes she will be back here this Tuesday. So pray for traveling mercy. Also be praying for me. I will not be here this week. I will be going to Fort Liberty better known as Fort Bragg, amen. Fort Bragg, North Carolina, amen. I will fly out in the morning and I will be there until Friday for my job. So you be praying for me. You will be, amen. Anything happen, please contact our assistant pastor, amen, Pastor Broads, amen, in my absence. And then before I give this back over to the giver, Amen. Just want to encourage everyone, if you can, please put on your calendar the 27th. Amen. Sister Debbie made the announcement the 27th of May. 
they have in the adjutant symposium here at 10 a.m. It's very important that we all be in place. Many things are changing in the church of God in Christ. And they would be here to update us, amen. First-hand information, amen. Coming from Secretary Dr. Bell, amen, Pastor Bell. Amen. If we want to know, we can't be ignorant, amen, of things, amen, that are changing. They've been to Des Moines, they've been, I think, to Cedar Rapids. Now they're coming here, amen, on this side of town, amen. Uh, the side of an hour to update us, amen, of some of the protocols, some of the protocols and things of the church has changed, has changed. So we need to be aware of those changes so they will be here, amen. Not only him, amen, but there are going to be others that will be here with him, amen, possibly from the national level that will be here with these classes, amen. These classes are very important in this day and hour. We're dealing with a lot, church. We are dealing with a lot in this day and hour. Amen. And we have to be able to still minister the word of God, still let people know that Jesus loved them. But some of the things, amen, we have to change, amen, so we can avoid lawsuits and things like that, amen. But there is a way, amen, to still be able to minister the truth to people, amen, without getting in trouble with the law. So they would be here. So place on your calendar the 27, the 27 at 10 a.m. And they promised to start promptly. That's what they said. They promised to start promptly. Not coaching time, not CP time, but promptly at 10 a.m. Amen. Once again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are in the house and all those that feel motherly roles. Amen. Whether you're a godmother, amen, or you just, amen, someone, amen, God has allowed to be a mother in a child's life. Amen. We give God thanks for you. So at this time, you're back in the hands of the giver. Mother's Day service today. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're gonna be doing presentations now. Um, we're in Constance for us. I am her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
we have come to the final remarks of benediction. Uh, Mother Constance Broyles again. <laughs> We're doing the final remarks of benediction. Would you like me to come over with the mic? Okay. Mother's Day uh, service on today. So we just thank the Lord for each of you and for each mother. We hope you go home and your husband has prepared a nice meal for you or he's going to take you and your children out for dinner. And come back next Sunday and let us know how wonderful that was. So we're all going to be waiting here. What a wonderful afternoon that you had today. But with all seriousness, I hope each and every one of you leave here and have a wonderful evening with your families. So God bless you and keep you in this care.